You probably didn't expect Oklahoma City to try and outdo New York, but here we are. One tower, 581 meters tall. That's 1,907 feet, higher than one World Trade Center, taller than the Willis Tower, and aimed straight at becoming the tallest building in the US. But here's the twist. It's rising just a few kilometers from a busy international airport, sitting in the middle of multiple flight paths. And now the FAA says this thing might be too tall to even fly around. So why is it being built here? How do you even anchor something that size in Tornado Alley? And will this whole plan collapse under its own weight, literally and financially? Let's find out. Back in 2023, Oklahoma City wasn't on anyone's list of skyscraper capitals. It had one major high rise, the Devon Tower at 258 meters and plenty of flat land to spare. But developers at Madison Capital decided to change the game. They unveiled a new $1.5 billion mega development called the Boardwalk at Bricktown. It wasn't just one building, it was an entire complex, three mid-rise towers, retail space, luxury hotels, thousands of apartments, and one centerpiece called Legends Tower. At first, it was supposed to be tall, then it got taller. The first public height was 530 meters, but by January 2024, it was revised to a record-breaking 581 meters. That number wasn't random. It matches the year Oklahoma became a state, 1907. And at 1907 feet, the tower would become the tallest building in the US and the sixth tallest in the world. City Council gave it the green light. They even removed the old height cap for downtown buildings. That meant the developers had full clearance from the city to go as high as they wanted. The only thing left in their way, the sky itself. So how do you actually build something that stands 581 meters tall in a city that gets slammed with tornadoes, where the soil isn't exactly stable? and where the airspace above is constantly busy with air traffic. That's what engineers working on Legends Tower are up against. And when you're planning to build the tallest skyscraper in the United States, taller than One World Trade Center, taller than Willis Tower, taller than anything Miami, Dallas, or Chicago has, you need a structural system that fights gravity, wind, and time itself. It all starts underground. Buildings this tall don't begin with steel. They begin with dirt, specifically getting past it. Oklahoma City soil is known for being highly expansive clay. That means it shifts when it gets wet or dry, which is a nightmare for foundations. So engineers will have to drill deep caissons, giant cylinders of reinforced concrete that go down 30 to 60 meters, all the way into solid bedrock. These aren't small holes, thick columns wider than a car designed to transfer the weight of over half a kilometer of tower into rock that's been there for millions of years. On top of these caissons, they'll pour a thick concrete mat foundation, possibly six to eight meters thick acting like a structural blanket to evenly spread the load. For comparison, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai uses a similar system, 194 board piles under a 3.7 meter thick raft slab. Legends Tower could go even deeper because of the soil conditions in Oklahoma. Next up, the core. Every super tall skyscraper needs a spine and Legends Tower is no different. The main core, likely made from reinforced concrete walls up to 1.2 meters thick, runs up the middle of the tower and holds everything essential. Elevators, stairs, electrical risers, plumbing. But when you go this high, just one central column isn't enough. 
That's why engineers will use mega columns spaced around the perimeter of the building, connected to the core with outrigger walls every 20 to 30 stories. These outriggers act like steel arms, bracing the core to the outer structure so that wind loads get shared between systems. This is the same setup used in China's Shanghai Tower and the Ping An Finance Center, buildings that climb over 600 meters into the sky. And speaking of wind, let's talk about what happens when Oklahoma's famous storms hit a 134-story tower. At this height, wind isn't just a factor, it's a daily opponent. So the shape of the tower can't be a simple glass box. The facade will likely be sculpted to disrupt wind flow, maybe with setbacks or aerodynamic tapering near the top. To fine tune the design, engineers will test scale models in a wind tunnel. They'll study vortex shedding, pressure zones, and acceleration rates to make sure the tower doesn't sway too much. But movement is inevitable. That's why somewhere near the top floors, the design may include a tuned mass damper, a giant counterweight, often weighing 300 to 800 tons, suspended on springs or pendulums. When the wind pushes the building, the damper swings the other way, calming the motion. Taipei 101 in Taiwan uses a 660-ton steel sphere. For Legends Tower, expect something just as massive to keep the upper floor steady. Now, zoom in on the floors themselves. Engineers plan to use post-tension concrete slabs. These are reinforced with steel tendons that are tensioned after the concrete cures, helping resist sagging and cracking over time. That's key when you're stacking hundreds of them one on top of another. These slabs will likely be around 20 to 30 centimeters thick, depending on the load. On the outside, the tower will have a triple glazed curtain wall system. Each panel might span 1.5 to 2 meters wide and several meters tall. These high-performance glass panels reduce heat gain, save energy, and mute sound. But in Oklahoma, they need to do more than that. Because of the real risk of debris from tornadoes and high winds, the lower sections of the building will need impact-resistant glass, possibly laminated with interlayers that prevent shattering. Even though tornadoes rarely climb higher than two kilometers, their strongest wind forces are much lower, meaning the base of the tower takes the brunt of it. That's why extra structural reinforcement will likely be concentrated in the lower 10 to 20 floors. Let's go inside. A building this tall can't run on just one elevator shaft. There will likely be multiple elevator zones, each with their own bank of high-speed elevators. The fastest in the world, like those in the Shanghai Tower, hit 20 meters per second. That's over 70 kilometers per hour. Legends Tower may include double-deck elevators, where one cabin sits on top of another, allowing more people to travel at once. Transfer lobbies, probably around every 40 floors, will help break up vertical traffic and let people switch cars, similar to how you change lines on a subway. Up at the top, well past the 120th floor, developers plan to install a 360-degree observation deck, a rooftop bar, and a fine dining restaurant. That means adding separate ventilation systems, fire-rated stairwells, emergency generators, and possibly extra elevator shafts for public access. In other words, these floors aren't just for views, they're fully functional and they'll be among the highest publicly accessible spaces in the Western Hemisphere. Finally, sustainability. While the full list of green features hasn't been revealed, a tower of this size needs to meet the latest standards. Expect smart HVAC systems, LED lighting, rainwater harvesting, and recycled construction materials. Depending on how these systems are integrated, the tower could aim for certifications like LEED Silver or Gold. That's now standard practice for mega projects like this, especially when you're trying to attract global investors. Now, here's the twist. The FAA isn't thrilled. Because of its location, Legends Tower falls inside flight paths for three major operations. Will Rogers World Airport, 
Wiley Post Airport, and Tinker Air Force Base. And that's a problem. In late 2024, the FAA flagged the tower as exceeding obstruction standards. They're worried it'll force changes to flight patterns, increase circling time for incoming planes, and make tight approaches harder. Airport authorities say the tower could lead to flight delays, missed approaches, and more airspace conflicts. Developers say they expected some pushback. They're waiting for the FAA report, but they've already admitted they're open to reducing the tower's height if needed. That's not ideal though. The 1907-foot figure is baked into the identity of the project. Shrinking it could dull its shine and maybe hurt investor interest. Speaking of investors, Madison Capital claims the financing is ready. The full development budget is somewhere between $1.5 and $1.6 billion. Phase 1 includes 1,776 residential units across the towers, two Hyatt-branded hotels with 934 rooms total, and more than 110,000 square meters of retail, dining, and event space. The whole thing will cover more than 185,000 square meters of built area once complete. Construction is set to begin in phases. First come the three mid-rise towers, shops, and hotels. Legends Tower itself will go up last, depending on how fast apartments fill and whether that FAA clearance ever comes. Reactions are all over the place. Some locals love it. They think it'll put Oklahoma City on the global map. Others are skeptical. One urban planner called it optimistic at best, noting that downtown OKC hasn't seen that kind of demand yet. Economists worry that the market may not support that much luxury housing, and real estate insiders are already asking if the developers can sustain interest and construction momentum over such a long timeline. But for now, the tower's approved, and the developers are pushing forward. If you want to see whether Oklahoma can pull off the tallest skyscraper in America, or watch it fall flat, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and turn those notifications on.